Bonsoir Nadine Yambo, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, welcome to the 8 p.m. Balingua Newscast on Equinox Television, live from Douala, Cameroon. It is our central news desk. In this edition of the Newscast, after international crisis groups, some opposition leaders in Cameroon are calling on the United Nations to sanction some key officials of the BIA regime over what they call rights violations in the two English speaking regions of the country. Hit by conflict. They sent the message today to visiting UN Rights Commissioner Michel Bachelet, who is in Yaoundé, Cameroon, and over in Bonabé Ridwala Force Subdivision, a woman and son die after a war collapsed on them. It is at the block set so deco of Chateau Do neighborhood, Douala Force Subdivision. We'll tell you more in this edition of the news. <music> Thank you very much. Listeners, uh, thanks and of course uh, viewers for staying with us in this uh, second segment of news in the English language. And shortly after or shortly before the end of our official visit uh, to Cameroon, the United Nations Human Rights Commissioner Michel Bachelet has made a major encounter this day. Michel Bachelet today met with the opposition, civil society, government officials and the church leaders who face to face with the senior UN official emptied their minds. The opposition used the opportunity to present concerns ranging from the electoral code to what they qualify as crackdown from the Yaoundé administration. The ruling CPT and party also presented efforts employed by its leader and president of the Republic of Cameroon, Paul Bia, to address problems faced by Cameroon. The opposition also called on uh, the international community uh, to apply sanctions against uh, Cameroonian top government officials over the escalating crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of the country, especially within the context of what they qualify as gross human rights abuse uh, committed in these regions of the country, hit by over two years of uh, conflict. And of course, uh, in the following excerpts, an opposition leader, Edith Kawala of the Cameroon People's Party, that CPP, and Gustafi Bai, who is representing the church, uh, presented what they told the UN Right Commissioner Michel Bachelet. So we were here to give an idea to Madame Bachelet about the situation in the country, to let her know that seven out of the ten regions in Cameroon are today faced with conflict. The acute conflict which is in the northwest and southwest and which today is touching the western region. The conflict in the extreme north against Boko Haram and the situation in the Adamawa, the east and the north, which is from the Central African uh, uh, gangs that are, are raiding. So most Cameroonians today are facing a problem of violence. Two, we wanted to inform her that this, uh, um, uh, in, in, the, in the context of these conflicts, grave human rights violations are being committed. In the northwest and southwest, we have seen the burning of villages and of homes. We have seen the extrajudiciary killings. We have seen arbitrary arrests. Over 1,000 people from the northwest and southwest today are in prison as we speak with their rights being violated. This violation of rights also occurred in the extreme north. We have video of extrajudiciary killings in the extreme north. Well, we try to discuss the fact that uh, when a fabric is broken, the energy that can bring it together needs to be a superior energy. And based on the crisis we are facing right now, we are so divided that it needs God to bring everybody together. We propose to the High Commissioner that religious bodies are pleading with the government, with the civil society, with everybody concerned and even the international bodies to allow the religious authorities help them, to help come out with the common situation. Because right now the only actor who can be found in every small village in this country is a religious leader. 
And apart from presenting the social, political, and security atmosphere of Cameroon to the UN official, opposition leaders also called on international community and the United Nations to apply sanctions on some key Yaoundé regime officials over the abuse of rights in the two English-speaking regions of the country and also in the far north region of Cameroon hit by the Boko Haram crisis. Kawala is president of the Cameroon People's Party. We have asked them to take sanctions against the individuals. There are individuals who are responsible for these atrocities and these violations in our country. They should see themselves suffering from a travel ban, from the freezing of their assets, from personalized queries to, to, to demand explanations from them why they gave these orders for these kinds of atrocities to be committed. And finally, we are asking for the international community that the government of Cameroon as a whole must be queried according to the treaties that we have signed, the international accords that we have signed. And this means going to various instances, including the Security Council of the United Nations, to demand for the rights of the Cameroonian citizen to be respected. We have put on the table political transition. This regime has failed woefully. It cannot solve these problems. Therefore, we are demanding today the departure of the regime. That is to be done by Cameroonians through non-violent demonstrations in mass. Then we will go to a national dialogue that will help us to discuss the Anglophone problem, but also many of the other problems that we are facing as a nation. International crisis group, apart from calling for sanctions against a top regime officials, also say separatists and the governments of Cameroon have all refused to dialogue within the context of a crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. They say their refusal has created a disturbing deadlock to the crisis in the two English-speaking regions of the country, which risks escalating further in the coming days. More in the following reports. The Bruxelles-based International Crisis Group say 1,850 people have been killed and 530,000 internally displaced as a result of the conflict in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon in the last 20 months with tens of thousands living as refugees in neighboring countries, blaming what they qualify as deadlock for the escalating conflict. International crisis groups say separatists have remained fixed on their stance for outright independence, while the government wrongly believes it can win a quick military victory. The non-governmental organizations say moderate and federalists who enjoy majority support are unfortunately unable to organize, partly because of separatists, calling for talks to hammer out practical details of independence in the presence of international mediators while the government refuses to discuss the form of state or reform of institutions. On the nature of the conflict, the non-governmental organizations say the crisis mutated into an armed conflict at the end of 2017, and today, seven armed militias are currently in positions of strength in most rural areas in the northwest and southwest. They say security forces reacted slowly and since mid-2018 have inflicted casualties on separatists, though unable to regain full control over rural areas no prevents repeated separatist attacks in towns and cities. International Crisis Group regretted that initiatives to promote dialogue like the Anglophone General Conference have met with opposition from the government and some separatists, even though majority of Anglophones support it. The NGO called on the government and separatists to shift from their positions, at least to agree on federalism or autonomous regions. To any of the parties refusing to make concessions or dialogue, International Crisis Group call on Europeans and Americans to sanction government leaders, senior military officials and separatists who continue to obstruct dialogue. They propose sanctions like travel bans, asset freeze and prosecutions through the International Criminal Court on social officials and possible financial rewards to officials who accept to make concessions.
International crisis groups say dialogue between governments, federalists and separatists should take place out of Cameroon in the presence of international actors, most preferably the United States of America, Switzerland, the Vatican, the United Nations, the European Union, especially France, Germany and the United Kingdom, as well as the African Union. And another international non-governmental organization is Human Rights Watch, which is so far accusing the government of Cameroon of trying to play over figures of right abuse in the two English-speaking regions of the country. The international non-governmental organization is basing their accusations on what they call is the restriction or refusal of the government of Cameroon to grant access to one of its officials to do findings in the two English-speaking regions of the country. Innocent as has more on that. The international organization Human Rights Watch holds government of Cameroon responsible for the attempts to curb reports of gross abuses committed by security forces in the northwest and southwest regions of the country hosting English speakers. This as a researcher of Human Rights Watch was restricted from entering into Cameroon April 12, 2019. Philippe Bolopion, Deputy Global Advocacy Director at Human Rights Watch, says the government of Cameroon is doing everything it can to keep the world in the dark about its ongoing abuses in the English-speaking regions of the nation. It says this will not work. Human Rights Watch asks that authorities at the Douala International Airport refuse to grant entry to senior researcher for Central Africa. Ilaria Allegrozi, despite receiving a three-month visa on March 25th, she was given no explanation by the airport authorities and has since not received clarification from the government despite several attempts. Allegrozi explains in her visa application that she plans to travel to the Anglophone regions of Cameroon to conduct research for Human Rights Watch on abuses perpetrated by both governments and armed separatist forces, as well as the impact of the crisis on people with disabilities. Human Rights Watch recently published a report accusing members of Cameroon Defense and Security Forces for carrying out an attack in Meluf, which division of the Northwest region that left at least four persons dead. The government of Cameroon has, however, denied the report, insisting it was unaware of any of such attacks in Meluf. According to the government, security forces have only destroyed places serving as hideouts for separatist fighters. On to something else, we move over to Bonaberry in the Douala 4 municipality where a woman and her son have been killed by a wall that collapsed on them. Reports say they were on their way when the wall collapsed on them. Immaculate Fogwe tells us more. They were on their way back home, but they will never see home again. Madame Taku Florence and her 19-year-old son have been killed by a wall that collapsed at Block 7 Sodiko at the Chateau d'Eau neighborhood in Douala. Inhabitants of the said locality blame the lack of strong pillars to support the wall as a root cause of its collapse. The wall, because that wall was the first wall of that warehouse. Uh, when the road work was going on, they have to reduce this to send the wall behind. But the man did it, he built the, the wall behind and then abandoned the, the old wall. And that wall was not, nothing was supporting that wall. So because of that hard wind we had yesterday night, uh, the, the wall went, uh, went down. But what is sure is that uh, we have called the attention of the, the owner of the wall. After the tragic scene, the boat victims were transferred to the Bonasama District Hospital. While on their way, the 19-year-old boy gave up the ghost. The mother was later transferred to the Lacantini Hospital, but was refused to be attended to by the doctors and nurses leading to her death. We arrived at the Bonasama Hospital and received the first care. But since her situation was very critical, we took her to the Lacantini Hospital. While there, the doctor refused attending to her by saying the emergency unit was full and that she could not remove any patient from there. The doctor denied coming to check on the patient in the car. She just told us to take her to Garnizong Militaire. 
I don't know if they know that their duty is to save lives and not the other way around. Due to the excruciating pain, the woman equally gave up the ghost. Dr. Tenny say, what don't flop? At the domicile of the victims, the family members and friends are all in tears. All the efforts made by the family members to come in contact with the owner of the building are all fruitless. It should be noted that this is not the first time that such a scene is occurring in the town of Douala. And over in the Logon and Shari division, we are in the far north region of the country. Simanji Kangebe tells us that our security forces have intercepted bags of Indian hem. His report. It was a busy day for the elements of the Legon and Shari Legion Office of the Gendarmerie. This trailer that was destined to Kuseri from Garwa transporting flour has been stopped by Kololem Boom, commander of the Gendarmerie Legion Office of Logon and Shari. According to Commander Boom, the trailer that was heading to Kuseri was stopped at Dibanga, where the control point of the security forces was based. Unfortunately, at the time of the control, the driver and the car aide of the trailer escaped before the security forces could realize. Meanwhile, a little private car that was also escorting the trailer with four passengers saw all its occupants escaping, but abandoning the car documents inside the vehicle. The call from the security officers in the Logan and Shari division is for the population to collaborate with them. It is just um, time for us now to call for uh, the population of this area to continue being with uh, the elements of uh, force and orders in uh, her to permit us to uh, gain, as we can say, this uh, uh, fight which we have been, uh, uh, which he has been going on against uh, these members of Boko Haram. Totally 15 bags of Indian herbs weighing more than 30 kilograms were seized and deposited at the Kuseri court as investigations continue to track down the occupants from the two vehicles. That's all we had time for as far as uh, the 8 p.m. Balingwa newscast is concerned. Thanks for watching. Nadi Ambo, bye-bye. Merci, famille Armstrong Sanda. Fin de ce journal, mesdames et messieurs. Merci pour votre aimable attention.